everyone, it's Raina. So this video is if you have your natal black moon Lilith in the 12th house. And this is Pisces domain. This is the area of um, self undoing. Also the area of mysticism, being a hermit, you know, solitude, contemplation, suffering, there's a lot going on in that 12th house, past lives, karma. Um, and so I, uh, it's, it's still hard to get a handle on Black Moon Lilith because as I've been kind of trying to, you know, do like, a, uh, uh, what do they call that when you're, when you're cramming for a test or something? trying to cram this information about Black Moon Lilith, Lilith ugh, so I can do these videos. And um, it just, it seems like there's like a lot of, um, I don't know if it's contradictory information, but it just, I don't know. Some have a darker edge to it than others. And I, I actually just started this over again because I was reading a little bit too much from a website that I found that was talking about um, what Lilith means in the first place. But um, anyway, I'm just going to go back and forth uh, between information uh, from a couple of websites I found that are halfway decent. And as always, I'm um, putting this in my own words. So whether or not this is what they intended is a, a whole s other story. Um, so one of the things that I have found a little bit frustrating is in astrology is that there are contradictory um, attributes given to different things. For instance, okay, what does the 12th house represent? And I have heard sites say the unconscious mind. I agree with that. But then I've heard sites that say it's the subconscious mind. I don't agree with that. I think that the eighth house is the subconscious mind. Twelfth house is the unconscious mind. Why? Because um, unconscious means that you have no idea what these influences are. Um, you know, for instance, because the 12th house is the house of self-defeating patterns, it goes, and addiction is one of them, and a big thing for the 12th house, it goes without saying that sometimes people are addicted and it's like they're doing it by rote. They have no idea. They're just like, and other types of self-destructive patterns the person has no idea what is compelling them to do it. And when you think about um, what addictions are, there's a, compuls a, cons a compulsive element to it. So you're being compelled to do something without knowing really why, um, especially if it is wreaking havoc on your life. And it's when people get regressed hypnotically regressed into past lives and they're like, Oh, well, you know, in this lifetime you've, you've had addiction issues for many lifetimes. And so this is just, you know, continuation from past lives or so you have a propensity for that. You are kind of like, you have kind of an escapist mentality or personality and that has not abated as you have, you know, gone into this lifetime. So, um, so that is more unconscious. The sub is, so you have to like do something like past life regression in order to get a handle on that in the eighth house, which is, uh, the subconscious mind, it's the shadow self. And we know that we've got something lurking down there, but we choose not to deal with it. It's like you have a closet that you haven't cleaned out for ages. You know, you're going to find some funky stuff in there. And yet you don't really know quite what it is. You might have some ink, an, an inkling, but you're not quite sure. So that's, that's how I separate those two. Um, but anyway, 
this is going to make you very sensitive, um, this placement. Uh, the two sites that I uh, am obtaining information from, which I want to give a shout out before I continue, advancedastrology.com and geocult.org. So, um, you know, because the 12th house being Pisces uh, related, it's just, it just has that vibe to it. Now, there's also going to be... Uh, you're going to be one of those people that has to, that really feels the need to, uh, do some soul searching. And, you know, you might even take it to that next level where you like to go and, um, do things that are very like retreat oriented. And that might be, uh, important for you. And, um, that's one of the reasons because they mention austerities here and austerities are simply in the, well, the sacrifice and things like that, restricting yourself. Um, this is something that people do, for instance, when they are in a, in a monastery, you know, that kind of thing, the begging bowl, the ashram, the, the begging bowl or the, the, um, eating one meal a day or something. These are austerities and it's austerities are done in religious settings in order to enhance that sacrificial quality. So that can go on. But the thing is that it can create a distortion. And so in other words, doing it to excess, um, This, this, um, this is a, an interesting, um, pattern. Geocult mentions, dot org mentions that, uh, you might go from one extreme to the other. So you, you, you do that and then you start to act very immoral. And because this is the house of actual prison, you might do illegal things trying to, they, they call it playing with fire. So it's like you're living on the edge and you're, it's like, it's interesting because it's still to me is a form of sacrifice, but it's like Russian roulette in a sense, because it's like, are you, you know, are you going to do that one thing that just destroys your life completely? And it's, it can make you want to work in an environment that is very, intensely, um, scary to you because they mentioned in one of these sites, like a fear of being imprisoned or being hospitalized or something like that. And then you might work in that very place. Um, and, um, getting back to supernatural stuff, you, you may either, uh, reject it or you are, um, very, or I shouldn't say reject it, but I mean, um, there could be fear attached to supernatural, but you still can have that, um, sense of, um, you know, accepting it on some level, even if you are af afraid of it. The 12th house, um, I think I mentioned addiction, uh, but the ultimate, the ultimate, uh, reason for addictions, you could say is escapism, wanting to escape pain, for instance, and the 12th house certainly can be that suffering, emotional suffering that people feel. And whether it's from this lifetime or from another, and, and whether a person comes into this word world with a melancholy disposition or whatever, it can still be something that is, um, very, uh, strongly, uh, identified, you know, being identified, uh, with that kind of emotional makeup 
and wanting to escape that through substance, the use of substances. And the other thing that is very common or could be um, true for you is with relationships. There, there can be the tendency to be very um, idealizing, you know, idealistic when it comes to a person. And they talk about overly uh, idealizing someone. And this kind of thing, you know, I see this too with Venus, Neptune uh, contact where the person is projecting this fantasy onto another person. So that has like kind of that Piscean theme to it. Um, and that can draw you to people who are not good for you. And that could be very self-destructive and, um, they say here that the, 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 that you could use escape, they, they said as an escape, I'd say like a drug, sex as a drug. Now I think, yeah, I think Black Moon Lilith has to do with sex too. So that, that, that's what makes it so much like, um, Pluto in that sense. Um, that it's very interesting. And because you might fall in love with the wrong person, um, that means that that person, you might become a victim and you're all, and one way is through manipulation because, um, this is the hallmark of a water house is that, uh, it can also, the dark side of it can be a uh, manipulation, which is emotional kind of, uh, shenanigans. <laughs> And it's, I'm, I'm, you know, getting this from advancedastrology.com and it just doesn't seem like I did the, I did the first house and, uh, Black Moon Lilith and it seemed like a totally different vibe. I'm, I'm not just talking about house placement, but what I had read on another site about, uh, about Lilith. So it makes me wonder because. I would think that this placement would really um, speak to someone who has a tendency to have some sort of clandestine relationships um, and that that is a form of rebellion. But I, had, I, I saw some kind of intimation about um, these kinds of, uh, hidden relationships or forbidden relationships, but I didn't see it connected to doing it as a way to th maybe thumb your nose towards convention, towards, um, the, uh, per perception of what a relationship is supposed to constitute in terms of monogamy or something like that. But I, I, <laughs> That's the, the 12th house would be more of the secretive aspect to it. But I'm also thinking of the spiritual, uh, what we would call the, the dogma that says, oh, you have to do this and that in a relationship. But the 12th house really, that, that might be more of the ninth house. I don't think the 12th house is really about morality per se. But I'm just going to throw it out there. I could be wrong about that. That's just my take on it. And um, watch out for uh, deception. I don't know if they are talking about the individual or y what you could be facing from others or maybe a combination thereof. Certainly in the house of Pisces and Neptune. This is par for the course. Um, also the need for having strong boundaries because um, Neptune is about dissolving. And so it really doesn't have that distinctive quality to it. It's 
this this is one of the reasons why a person can be victimized because they don't see that uh they have to they have to have something to protect it's like they feel it's 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 just like that song i am the walrus by the beatles i am you as she is he and we're all together that's like the 12th house and that there is you know i do believe that there's that aspect to life but I also believe that we are individual souls too. And we have to be self-protective as well. So I think that, I think that, you know, because Lilith, I think that can also be taboos in society and things like that. Um, so, so to me, sometimes if somebody does, have addictions, they might be kind of defiant about that and be like, you know, and what, you know, but I don't know. It's interesting that they did say there could be some kind of well, it says Black Moon Lilith in 12th house can leak your secrets. That's uh, advancedastrology.com. So it's kind of weird. It means like your secrets come out, I guess. And there could be, they said secret love affairs can be the cause of scandals. Um, but I feel like there's a rebellious quality somewhere uh, embedded in there. They're not really, um, this particular site doesn't really play that up. And I think that there should be this kind of aspect of like, you know what, I'm, I can do what I want to do. I don't have to be what somebody else expects or what society expects. And I don't have to be, I can be, or, you know, maybe it's even like I can be a spiritual being and be a sexual being at the same time because I'll just read exactly what it says from advancedastrology.com. Uh, alternatively, Lilith in the 12th house can play out as a repressing your feminine side, regardless of your gender. People with this placement can be afraid of trusting their intuition, being vulnerable, giving and nurturing. Oh, that wasn't about, that was like, That wasn't what I was talking Okay, this is what I meant because it was about sex. This placement can also play out as being taught that sex is wrong or they might have been shamed for expressing their sexuality. Now, this I was trying to figure out the connection to the 12th house. I do think that it does have that. They must be looking at it from that morality standpoint because Jupiter is an ancient ruler of Pisces and it's there for the 12th house. So... I suppose it, it might have some remnants of those kinds of moralistic attitudes. So, yeah, so this kind of uh, repression of sex, but uh, conversely, maybe the person, you know, is very promiscuous because they're acting out uh they're like overly um, rebellious and therefore they are promiscuous because they're trying, and especially women because of that feminist angle. And they're trying to prove that they're not, nobody can shame them or control them. And the problem with this is that it's not a true action. It's a reaction. It's, riffing off of somebody else's attitudes or behavior towards you. So that's where it's not very, um, what I would say effective in terms of having that sort of, um, extreme mentality or reactive mentality or behavior, because when you're acting from an organic and authentic place, um, it's not due to other people's attitudes. It's all within yourself. Uh, one more thing, because the 12th house is the dream state. This can be, uh, somebody who has 
nightmares, um, your dreams, you might have lucid dreams and, um, they mentioned deja vu. So that would be like thinking that, you know, experiencing something over again, something that's familiar. I think deja vu is actually past life remembrance myself, but Anyway, I think I'll leave it there. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.